Hi, this is Eric. I am the Gray Goat. This is my garage, the Gray Goat Garage, Triple G, if you will, and we are powered by OMBWarehouse.com. Today, we're back on to the Wildcat 223 build, and what I want to impress upon you is this is like building a stroker engine because it does have the 58 millimeter crank and the 70 millimeter bore. So there's certain things that we need to address, but we're gonna look at pistons first. You're gonna notice right here on the top, I've got some numbers written on the top of the block and that's 057. What that's indicating is this engine with the stock rod, the stock piston, the piston was 50, seven thousandths down in the cylinder when when i when it's brand new so i don't want that because i want compression compression is going to be our friend in these engines to help us make power so what i've done for this is i bought the plus 20 uh, clone rod and i have the 570 pin height piston versus the 550 pin height piston and i can show you that here now Here's the stock flat top out of the Wildcat. And those of you that know Predator engines know that a Predator has a, a non-hemi, has a 570 pin height piston. And if we butt those up together, you can see that there is 20 thousandths taller on the non-hemi piston. Whereas a Hemi piston would be the same as this. This piston will go right into a, a stock Hemi engine. But we want to get that piston up in the bore. So I, I'm adding 20 thousandths with the piston and 20 thousandths with a connecting rod. That should get me theoretically at 17 thousandths in the hole. What I'm really looking for on this is 20 thousandths in the hole. But as long as we're not spinning it over 7,000, 7,500, which is gonna to be tough with this engine because it's going into a heavy Coleman bike and it's gonna have a torque converter. So 7,000 really is a fairly good ceiling for that. And we're kind of building, gearing this build around that 7,000, 7,500 RPM ceiling. So even if we were 3,000s tighter, and the, when I say 3,000s tighter, I'm gonna be 17,000s in the hole. I'm going to use a 10,000s shim head gasket and that's going to give me 27 thousandths clearance between the top of the piston and the bottom of the head. Obviously, I'm going to have to measure that once we get everything together, but um, we'll be real close. If I have to stack head gaskets, I'll use two 10 thousandths head gaskets to get more clearance. I'm hoping to not have to do that, but if I have to, I will. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm parched. Okay. So... What we have here is the Wildcat head and a stock Hemi head. You're gonna notice that they're very, very similar, but the valve cover is different and the gasket surface on this is different than the Predator Hemi. So the valve covers do not interchange and OMB Warehouse has gaskets for the Wildcat uh, heads when, when you adjust your valve so you can use a new gasket. So very similar, same 27, 25, valve configuration um, we have stainless valves going into this head once i get it all ported um, this head's going to take a lot of work on the on the bench um, the the intake port very much chokes down as it, it hits the bowl area but the good news is the bowl area was ground at an angle so it's not chunked out like a standard predator head where it's just a a, a square cylinder cut in here so got a lot of work to do here. I've got well over a quarter of an inch of material to remove from the short side radius, but that's something that we can get done. Another thing that I noticed on this engine was the push rods. These are stock Hemi push rods, which are 5.540 inches in length. The Wildcat push rods are 5.83 inches in length. So to get the proper push rods for this engine, I bought the cut to length chrome molly push rods and we'll get those cut and put in this engine so I have the correct valve train geometry for this engine. Um, that uh, A lot of people are afraid of that, but I will have a video showing how I do that and uh, we'll, we'll get all that done. 
also to, to bump up the compression on this because compression is our friend I had the face of this milled 60 thousandths so we should be right around 11 to 1 11 and a half to 1 compression with this engine um, I will set my valve lash real tight so we can get everything um, spinning over real easy so it's not hard to pull so let me set this off to the side and here's the the rocker arms from the wildcat these are exactly the same as the predator hemi engine uh, same configuration same diameter pin same everything essentially so we'll be reusing these um, just like a predator hemi this has a shallow spring pocket and we need to keep our valve lift under 300 thousands so we're going to use the cm grind or the hot 265 super x cam for this build and i've already started mocking up the crank and the cam and let's see and get that out without dropping the cam out okay so here's the the 265 cam that we're using and i've got this in the engine right now and it is timed with the dots aligned but I had issues when I was doing this. So what I do is we have this tool available at OMB Warehouse and it needs to go on correctly. And what this does, you can put a couple bolts into your block and this will allow you to look in the engine and spin the engine. I don't know why it grabbed right there but we have to make sure that we're checking all of our clearances. One thing that, um, that I noticed, you'll see on the crank right here that I put some marks with a Sharpie. Well, when I installed the Dyno Cams Hot 265, it had a very large spring here, and this is the decompressor lever. What that does is this little lever lifts the lifter up and will burp the exhaust valve to make it easier to pull over so because there's so much compression going into this engine we're going to set our tolerances real tight to make sure that that decompressor pushes up the lifter lifts the valve and and allows this engine to pull over easier but the spring was hitting the crank right here where i've marked it so i thought i marked it because i thought well maybe i have to grind on the crank but then i looked at the stock cam and I've got these springs switched around, but the stock cam had a very small diameter spring on it, whereas the, the dyno cams with the, with the clone core had a large diameter spring, and it was this spring that was rubbing against the crank. So I just swapped springs over. Not a big deal. It's still going to work. It's still, um, you know, a spring's a spring. So we got the same tension there. We're all good. So you have to get creative when you're building stroker engines like this. And, you know, it, with, with Chinese tolerances, we have to make sure that, that everything fits together, works together, and, and rotates together. Um, the last part of the puzzle that I did was I noticed that the lobes on the cam were hitting the bottom of the cylinder. And I'll be... You like this drop light? Nice, right? So at the bottom of the cylinder, in this area right here, I got the Dremel out and I ground some material off the bottom of that, that cylinder here on the outside. You have to be very careful when you're doing that. Don't hit the, the, the cylinder itself. Make enough clearance. What I'm looking for is 30 thousandths, um, 30 to 40 thousandths clearance here. So don't be afraid to get in here and do a little work. Grind this cylinder down so the cam's not hitting. Had I, had I not checked that, well, this engine would have been knocking and it would have uh, made a lot of noise and potentially eat itself up. So that's why having this tool here is a benefit to building an engine. It allows you to mock everything up, get everything together, rotate your crank, make sure that everything's clearing and then you can move on. So the last part of the puzzle 
for this, I have to wait until the rod and the piston are installed because dyno cams has this warning. Cam may require clearancing between the lobes when using a billet rod. Okay, but we don't need instructions, so we just throw that out and we just disregard that. However, there are some cam cores that have additional material between the lobes here. You can see where this one's been machined out here. And the stock cam has nothing machined out. Well, everything has to be checked. And when I say everything, I mean everything has to be checked. So once I have the, the rod installed with the piston, then I'm going to put my clear cover back on and rotate the engine around and make sure that the connecting rod is not hitting the center of the cam. If it is hitting the center of the cam, what I'll do is I'll put a little dab of grease onto the rod where it could contact the cam. I'll rotate the engine till I feel it hit. And then at that point, it's going to leave a mark of grease on the cam. And that's where I know where to start grinding. So, you know, you don't have to get real aggressive with this. Don't remove more material than you have to. But it's something that needs to be checked. And if you have to clearance your cam, um, put a sanding roll on the Dremel and just take, take some material out from the center of it here. The last thing that you'll notice, this crank looks awfully clean. I took a wire wheel to this brush after I taped everything off. Just, uh, it's a sand cast crank. So I don't want any extra sand or anything on this crank while I'm, you know, building an engine. So I made sure that to get everything really clean and little things like that will help your engine live a lot longer. So next episode, I'll have the, the, the rod in and, and the, the bottom end, we'll start putting it together. And then um, hopefully in the meantime, I'll get the head ported. I am Eric. I am the Gray Goat. This is my garage. We're powered by OMBWarehouse.com. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you.